بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما سبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم وبعد Special brothers and sisters listening at home assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I was well I was supposed to do a talk but I wasn't in the mood of doing it I wasn't feeling well as well but my respected brother Mawlana Imran Saab ordered me commanded me that I have no choice whatsoever that I have to come and do the talk so inshallah I am here in front of you for a few minutes uh, until <coughs> Salatul Asr uh, and then after that we have some very important talks continuing for the rest of the day inshallah ta'ala we live in a time right now where we all are aware of difficulties, hardships and problems in terms of our economical lives. For the past few years, not just Muslims, even non-Muslims, we are, we are all f- experiencing, if not all of us, some of us, or many of us, or some of us, experiencing economic difficulties and hardships. Who doesn't know about the global financial crisis? Everybody knows about the recession. Every Muslim or non-Muslim, every second person you talk to talks about life is very difficult, times are tough, there's recession in the world. What I want to do in the next few minutes is talk about this issue of recession and financial difficulties in light of the teachings of Allah and His beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa What does a Muslim do? And how is an Islamic setup based in financially? We, alhamdulillah, have been given a beautiful religion with guidance and teachings in every aspect. As we all know, Islam is not just about coming to the masjid and praying. It's not just about you know, dressing like a Muslim or growing a beard and wearing a hat or covering your head with a hijab. Islam is a comprehensive way of life. There are rules and etiquettes, injunctions of Islam related to every aspect of our life. The way we dress as well as how we deal, the way we transact, there are basic laws and rules that govern and deal with our money and wealth. The students who are studying, if you ask them, every book of Islamic jurisprudence and fiqh that they study, and every book of hadith that they study, there's a chapter called Kitab al where there's hundreds if not thousands of hadiths of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that deal with business transactions. You don't just have Kitab al-Salah, it's not just the prayer, you know, the chapter of prayer and the chapter of wudu and the chap- chapter of uh, ghusl and tayammum and, and, and fasting and Ramadan and taraweeh and suhoor and iftar. You finish with all of that and zakat and hajj and then you come into a very important field and area where you have numerous hadiths of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Chapter about hiring, chapter about renting, chapter about uh, being a landlord, chapter about being an employer, chapter about being an employee, chapter about loan credit transactions. There's verses in the Quran as well about all of this. So Islam, there's a very important aspect. And in order for a Muslim to be a complete Muslim, it is not enough just to pray five times and just come in the masjid in Ramadan and do suhoor, iftar and, and taraweeh and, and tahajjud and enter a majlis and do dua and go to sleep. That's not enough. That's just like two, five, ten percent of being a Muslim. If that Muslim, no matter how he looks as a Muslim externally, and no matter how he comes into the masjid, but when he goes into the marketplace, when he's in the business sector, when he's at his, at his office, when, he's, when he is at his office or in his field or where he's, how he's earning his money, if he's not earning it, and he is not following the principles, guidelines of the Qur'an and Sunnah, then this person is not cl- even close to being a practicing Muslim. And that's why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say in the Sunnah of Imam al-Tirmidhi, there's a hadith, that, التُجَّارُ يُحْشَرُونَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فُجَّارًا All the businessmen, all the traders, all the merchants, they'll be resurrected on the Day of Judgment as sinners. All of them. Before we get scared, he said, "Illa man ittaqa wa barra wa sadaq," except the one who feared Allah in his business transactions. Taqwa in business transactions, except the one who stayed away from haram and lawful activities in his wealth and money, and the one who was truthful and the one who was trustworthy. There's no 
there is no benefit in coming to the masjid and then having so much amounts of le- loans and debts to pay off to people which we don't pay off. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Matalu al-ghani yudlmun." The one who has money and he doesn't pay off debts on time, he's an oppressor. He's a zalim. Zalim is not just a zalim ruler, an oppressor of an Arab country in the Middle East. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that the one who doesn't pay debts on time, on time, is also an oppressor. He is a zalim. And what does the hadith say about zulm? Zulm al-zulumat al-yawm al-qiyamah. That oppression will bring about darkness. What, what will opp- oppression bring about? Darkness on the day of judgment. So anyway, we have been, this is just besides the point, but what I w- really wanted to say that we have this financial crisis. The non-Muslims and many of the experts have now, well they did know before, but now they are really realizing the flaws in the, in the non-Islamic or the conventional Western capitalistic system of economics. They themselves, because of all the recession, because of the problems of the banks, they've been having meetings after meetings after meetings, conferences after conferences. What shall we do? The world is on the verge of collapsing and it could collapse. It's, there's no end. You know this recession, if, if, if it goes into extreme and the world collapses, there's mayhem, there's anarchy, there's rioting, there's looting, there's no law and order. The whole system collapses. That's what happened with the socialist system in Russia and elsewhere as we all know. And the whole you know, former USSR fell because of the whole ca- socialist system of business, transactions, economics fell. So this is the capitalist system. They are very worried. They've been having meetings. A few years ago, or last year or the year before, they had, there's a world economic forum known throughout the world. Very, you know, big, big organization that involves all the governments and all the leaders. So they have annual meetings. So this time what they did was they said, let's go, let's invite the religious people to come and tell us what does religion give as guidance, how can we solve these problems from a religious point of view? One of the scholars from the Muslim world as well, he went and he presented a paper and he explained to them that the cure and the remedy is only in following the teachings of Islam. All the problems that you have faced the, and because of which recession has come, the cures are all in the Islamic system. And he explained, he, he presented a 35, 40 page uh, document. And in, in it he clearly mentioned, and they acknowledged it. They said, yes, this makes sense. Uh, because you see, the capitalistic system, the, the, the system of how the world runs, is a system, they say that, look, religion should have no say whatsoever in our system. No system, no, religion, this is what the, the secular system, this is the secular understanding. Separate church, from, separate God from state, church from state, mosque. There should be no, don't, don't mix the two things up. You become a Muslim in the masjid, you do dhikr, you do worship, do itikaf, everything, that's it. When you, when you go out of the masjid, you're no longer a Muslim. That's, that's the secular understanding. You go once a week to the church, you sing, you do all the hymnings and all, all the stuff, you celebrate Christmas, you go to the mid- midnight mass, and then once you're outside, that's it. If you're in the bank sitting, do you think about what does God say about interest? No. Religion doesn't play a role in your money. It doesn't play a role in how you, you rule a country, according to them. This is completely at odds with Islam. Islam says, no, this is, this is not religion. There is no separation of state from church. There is no separation of mosque from state. So, this is why their whole system, system was based on, on nothing to do with religion. Even though on their money, you know, if you see the dollar, I don't, I don't have a dollar, we're not in the United States right now. We have a speaker, inshallah, coming who's from the United States after Asr, he'll be giving a talk. It's just uh, uh, random. He was supposed to be coming and then we, we told him, but there'll be an announcement made. If you see on the dollar, you could probably ask him, I'll ask him, I don't know if they still have it. If you see on the dollar, it says, In God we trust. It's written on every dollar. But when it comes to making concept, of money based on God's teachings, then in God we don't trust. Then God's gone, out of the picture. It's just 
you know, there's no reality behind this. There's no reality. So, there are religious divine guidelines. Like what? For example, I'll give you a few examples. Islam is very, very particular about the whole economic system of the world running on what we call just distribution. This is what Islam says. And this is, this is a very lengthy topic, but I'm just giving you some brief bullet points, just if you, if you understand, you understand, if not, khair, inshallah. But the first point here is that the Islamic system is very particular about just distribution. You know what just distribution means? It means that Islam is very particular. Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are very particular about ensuring that there is no massive gap, separation between the rich and the poor in the world. Allah says in the Quran, Kayla yakuna dulatan bain al minkum. So that this wealth doesn't become a monopoly between the rich amongst you. If you look at all the hadiths of Kitab al Buyu' and all the pages that the students and the teachers study and teach in business transactions, you'll see all the rules, a lot of them, they, ba- they are based on shirka, mudaraba, all of this partnership and investment, it all takes you to one thing which is equal just distribution, circulation of wealth. There will be some people slightly richer, more rich than the others, that's of course given, but not as it is right now where, like one of the reports said in 2007, 20% of the people of, in US, in US this is, 20% of people owned 85% of the whole wealth of the USA. 20%. Uh, they own how much? 85%. So that leaves 80% owning the remaining 15%. That's what we call the rich, you know, there's the, a the few handful of people in the world, you know, 30, 40, 50 people, their wealth totally equals the wealth of the rest of the humankind. This is the Western capitalistic system. System based on interest, system based on bankers and banking, this conventional banking, system which just makes the rich more rich and the poor even poorer. There are people in the world where they, they're animals and donkeys and they're cattle and cats, you know, they, can, they spend like 100,000 pounds on them. And there are people, human beings in East Africa, human beings who are dying and they can't even spend a pound. That's the difference. In the same world, sometimes in the same country, sometimes in the same city, you'll have people who are feeding their dogs and cats water and spending, you know, 1,000 pounds on the treatment of their pet animals, pets. And in the same city, in the same street maybe, you'll have somebody who can't, a human being cannot even afford medicine or even have enough to eat for the day and they die. This is the reality we see. It's based on the whole capitalist system. So, and this is one of the wisdoms of zakat. What did, what did the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say about zakat? He said, تُؤْخَذُ مِنْ أَغْنِيَائِهِمْ وَتُرَدُّ عَلَى فُقَرَائِهِمْ one of the objectives of zakat is that it's taken from the rich, um, rich amongst them and spread out amongst the poor in the same community so that the rich don't become too rich. If you've got excess wealth, rich people, then the hadith says, take that and give it to the poor people. So they also, it becomes, there becomes a balance. So this whole system is, is based on this. The, the capitalist system is based on concentration of wealth. What is it based on? Concentration, it's, concentr- it's like, you know, you know when in the body, when blood is concentrated in one part, you have a, uh, what do you call it, a blood clot, maybe. What happens? The human dies. You know, the blood doesn't circulate. That's how economy dies. When money is not circulated, it's concentrated, it's blocked in a place. And this is what the interest system does. Islam says circulation of wealth. It keeps on flowing, keeps on moving one place to another. It's equally, equally distributed. And that's why interest has been condemned in Islam. This is, you know, people used to say, interest is haram, riba is haram, unlawful, sinful in Islam. There's not just, interest is not just haram just because Allah felt like it. It's, you know, there are books, there are even non-Muslim economists, they've written like lengthy articles on the wisdoms behind why interest is haram, and it makes sense now to them. Riba, interest, usually, why is it haram and sinful in Islam? It's not just because Allah felt like it, that's it. 
It's a major sin in Islam. What does Allah say? أَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْبَيْعَ وَحَرَّمَ riba. You know, they used to say in the days of Jahiliyyah, قَالُوا إِنَّمَا الْبَيْعُ مِذْلُ riba. They say business and interest, they both, they, they look the same. What's the difference? Like some people say today, what's the difference? I'm selling my mobile phone or I'm selling my money. What's the difference? There's a massive difference. But anyway, so this was the first point, which is that circulation of wealth. Then we have in the Islamic system, we have the nature of money. What is money? Ever heard of Imam Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah? Hassan al-Basri was a great alim, faqih. He was a faqih, jurist, a Sufi. But he wasn't just a Sufi during dhikr. He used to also deal with money issues. This Imam Hassan al-Basri, he has a statement. You know what he says? He's written books. He's written articles on the nature of money. Who's this? Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah. The great Imam and Shaykh and Sufi and faqih. He says, money is such a thing that it does not benefit you unless it leaves you. He's telling us, teaching us the nature of money. What is money? Money does not benefit you until it does not leave you. You can you know, go and put under your bed, like somebody's house, they caught 70,000 pounds in cash. Okay. You can put 70,000 pounds in cash under your bed or under your carpet or in the attic or in the, under the floorboard. Is it going to benefit you? It's in your mind, it's mentally benefiting you. Uh, you keep on thinking, you go salah, after 70, you've got the seven zero. it's just in your head, it's just a head, it's in the head, it's not doing anything. It doesn't benefit you until it leaves you. When it leaves you, you buy a car, or you buy some food, or you go somewhere, or you do something, or you buy clothes, that's when, when it benefits you. Now what Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah is trying to say with this is that look, there's two aspects of money, and this is what Islam considers money as. Number one, money is not an objective in itself. It's not an objective. You can stack up money to the ceiling, to the sky. Just 10 pound note, 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 and keep it. Does it, will it do any, any benefit? It's not going to benefit at all. It's, a, it's not an objective, it's not an end. Money is a, what is it? A means to an objective. So the idea, the purpose should not here be the gathering of wealth, that's it. Keep on gathering money, 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 as much wealth, as much wealth, money, money. This is the nature of money. And this is what happened in the capitalist system, the bankers. Just creation of money after money after money. People become greedy. People become greedy to the point that they just want to keep on accumulating and gathering wealth, money for the sake of money. Sorry. Okay. Money for the sake of money. People keep on gathering wealth and money for the sake of money. What does Allah say in the Quran? وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ الَّذِي جَمَعَ مَالًا وَعَدَّدَةٍ يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَا لَهُ أَخْلَدَةٍ Woe and destruction be unto who? The one every backbiter, humazatul lumaza, slanderer. And then he said, الَّذِي جَمَعَ مَالًا وَعَدَّدَةٍ That person who keeps on gathering money, cash, and keeps on counting it every day. 10, 20, 30, 40, every day, 24, 7, just keeps on counting his cash. Allah is saying, woe, destruction unto be this person. And not just anyone who counts, but of course the one who then neglects other important aspects of his religious obligations, and then, you know, that's what Allah is talking about. الَّذِي جَمَعَ مَالًا وَعَدَّدَةً يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَالَهُ أَخْلَدَةً Does he think that his mal is going to his wealth, is going to keep him here forever? He's going to live here for 439 years? No, he's going to die in another 10, 15 years. 40, 50, 60. Average is about 60. So, this greed that's come into the Western capitalist system and even in the Muslims. One of the reasons why we have the recession and the global financial crisis is because of the greed. Money became means itself. Everybody wants just money, 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 money. There's no etiquette of business. There's, not, there's no intention that, look, let me do business. In Islam, when you do business, you have to have another intention. Not just profit, not just gaining profit. Profit is there, but Islam says you should, before you undertake a business venture, you need to think what's more productive, what's more beneficial for humanity. Let me think, what's, what, what do people need? I need money, I need profit of course, but what, what, what do I need to manufacture? What are people in need of? What's going to help the Muslims and humanity, non-Muslims as well? This is the, this is the approach. 
This is the adab and etiquette of business. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and then also having this no greed, meaning you have this concern for others. Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when they used to trade, there's an incident mentioned, I've mentioned this a few times, that a, a customer came to one of the companions, and he said, can I buy this from you? He said, can you see that shop there across my brother? Go to his shop and buy it from him. And he said, well, you've got it, why didn't you sell me? He said, just go there. He said, he has the same item, you have the same item, let me just buy it from you. He said, no, go there. He said, well, what, what's the reason? He said, the reason is that since morning, we both came together, we both opened our shops, and since morning, I have had three customers already. I've seen my brother, he has, he has had no customers. I want him to profit just like I do as well. So go to him. This is the, this is the adab, this is, this is the etiquette, and these are the etiquettes, and this is the spirit with which Muslims do business. It's not greed. It's not about just acquiring of money doesn't become the objective. Greed is condemned in Islam. The whole capitalist system, the banking system, the bonuses and the banks, you know, the banks, banks, very greedy. It's just about money. Just easy money. Who cares what the world is going through? Who cares in Africa? People could die. I want my bonuses. I want one million bonus, who cares if there's a bone, you know, there's a child who, who is, whose bones you can see and will die tomorrow. But they're fighting for their bonuses, bank bonuses. This is the capitalist system. Islam says this could never happen. The spirit with which you have to, you know, some, you know this all the spirit with which business needs to be done. So, being selfish is condemned in Islam. Greed is condemned in Islam. Not differentiating between right and wrong is... Islam says, look, asal, the really, the real life is akhirah. This life is just a basic, just uh, a bridge that you're crossing over. If you're crossing over, then don't make, earn wealth and money just to help you cross over the bridge. If someone tells you, you just have to cross from here to here, just earn a bit of money that just what? Makes you cross over the bridge. Think about your people around you as well on the same bridge. When you're going Hajj and Umrah, you're traveling, think about your fellow travelers as well. Do you need something? Okay, here I'll give you. This is why Sadaqah, there's so much reward. Because we're all traveling on the other side of the bridge. We're just helping one another in our journey. It doesn't matter if someone has more, someone less. It's just a small journey, short journey. The real life is the next life. So, this is what Imam Hassan al-Basri said. What did he say? He said, money is something that it shouldn't be made a means. It doesn't benefit you until it doesn't leave you. So it should not be made an objective means in itself. What else does, does he mean? The second part of this statement of his, he, he, uh, he says that, yeah, well, greed and, and this, uh, this uh, that money is not uh, a... Yeah, so what, what else he's trying to say with this is that, look, money itself, you can't eat money. You can't what? Can you eat money if, if you're feeling hungry, make a cake out of it? No. Can you just make a blanket out of it? Somebody might make a blanket out of it. But you can't. It's, it's, in, it's intrinsically, money does not have any value. A clean 50 pound note, just fresh, printed, is exactly the same in value to a really, you know, old tatty 50 pound. If you go to the shop and you give him a tatty 50 pound old note, say, no, 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 I don't want this, I want a good one. Will you say that? No, it doesn't make a difference. As long as it's you know, not completely ripped, but even if it's ripped, if you, if you tape it, it's, it's valid. It's exactly the same. Money is not a commodity. All units of money are the same. Money is different from what? A commodity. This is why the Islamic system is based on commodities. It's based on assets. It's not based on making money out of money. And this is where interest comes in. This is why Allah said, when the kuffar, they said, the mushrikeen, they said to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why is interest haram? Business and interest looks the same. What did Allah say? أَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْبَيْعَ وَحَرَّمَ riba. First of all, we don't even need to explain to you the wisdoms. Let it be known, Allah has made business halal, riba haram, full stop. End of story, go to sleep. But if you still want to know the wisdom, there are major differences. Zina and nikah, marital relationship, looks the same. Doesn't it? It's the same. But there's a difference. What's the difference? In, in nikah, you actually take the responsibility. What do you do? You take the responsibility. You, have, you get the benefits of enjoying your relationship with your spouse, but at the same time, you have to hear some things from with your ear as well. And you have to earn, and you have to work hard. You're no longer a bachelor. Zina is you do your job and see you later. This is a difference. 
Likewise, business and interest. Making money out of money is guaranteed. Which creates the recession, which creates problems. It's just money, just money being made and printed. Birth of money after money. Islam says you cannot exchange, you cannot make money out of money. Money is different from what? A, a commodity. A car is different. You can make money out, out of a car. Buy a car for 500 pounds, sell it for 600 pounds. Alhamdulillah, brilliant profit. You've created something in the, in the what? Uh, in the market, you've passed on, you've bought a house, you're selling a house, you're making money out of assets. The whole Islamic system is based on assets. When, when a system is based on assets, commodities, what happens? You are, when money is being uh, exchanged, you are creating assets, things are being made, houses are being built, food is being created, produced, things are being produced in the market. But when it all becomes money based, you take 100 pounds, give me 200 pounds. You take 50,000 pounds from the bank, you want, they want 80,000 pounds. When people take interest from the banks, it's all just assets are not being created. When assets are not being created, commodities are not being created, it's only the exchange of money. Finally, it will get to a tipping point, boiling point, where the whole economy will, will fall. This is what creates recession. And that's why, you know, one of them actually did say, I have it written here, one, one of the World Islamic Forum, this is last year, he said, in the modern economics, uh, sorry, yeah, the chairman, chairman of the World Economic Forum, he said, today, this last year or the year before, we have reached a tipping point which leaves us with only one choice. He's a non-Muslim leader of World Economic Forum. What does he say? May Allah give him hidayah, is the Moran is saying here. What does he say? Today we have reached a tipping point that leaves us with only one choice. Either we change the way we are doing our business, or we change our system, or we face, we face the continued, de continued decline and misery that we are facing right now. This is the chairman. And that's why they called religious leaders. They called Christian leaders, Jewish leaders, Muslim scholars, to give them guidance that what, how can we change the system in an Islamic setup. So in an Islamic setup, interest will be haram. It will be out of the system. There is no place for riba and interest. If we just take out riba interest from the system, 95% of the problems are solved, or maybe even more than that. The whole system it flourishes based on shirka, mudaraba, partnership, investment. Remember, investment, a lot of these times, you know, Muslims do this as well, which people ask, which is completely haram. You know, when you invest, Islam says, look, you, have, you can't make money over money. So when you give someone money, make your mind up. Is it a loan or is it an investment? What does Islam say? Make your mind up. If you want to give somebody a loan, qard, it's called qard hasan. Why is it called qard hasan? Because it's, you're not taking anything in return. If you want to please Allah, you want to get reward, nothing in return. Here's the money, you do business, give me my original capital back. That's it, I don't want even a penny. But if you think, no, I want to make some money, I want to do business, no problem. Say this is an investment, shirka. You take the money, invest it. We'll agree on a, what? Percentage of profit. Either you do this, or either you do that. You can't do both at the same time. Like you can't have your cake and eat it at the same time as they say. You can't do both. Now a lot of times, what people do? Here's investment. Profit, give me. If there's no profit, my original money is guaranteed. That is totally haram in Islam. It's like the difference between nikah and zina. You have to take the risk. You have to take the risk. If you want profit, you have to take the risk of your money losing, complete loss. If that, that business venture falls and that's it, your money is gone, capital is gone. If you don't want it to go, then you can't even ex expect even a penny profit. So make the mind up. Is it qard or is it investment? So many times people say they take 200, you know, they take thousand, 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 guaranteed every month will give you 200. Anytime there's guaranteed, that is a complete haram, interest-based, unlawful, sinful transaction. Now, no matter how many, how many salah you come to the masjid. It's a complete haram transaction. The money, totally haram. You can't have guaranteed return. So anyway, we just have two, three minutes and I'm going to end. So even these people are, are, are understanding. So this was one of the, if you take interest out from the system, 
the whole spirit, the economic system changes. And then there are so many other things in the Western system, the capitalist system, that Islam condemns and are not allowed in Islam. Like for example, you know, sh- short sales. They have sales of, sale of debts. I don't know if people, if they've studied economics, they know what this means. They sell debts. Created one of the major reasons why we find ourselves in a recession. The global financial crisis, if you read the reason why there was a global financial crisis. The sale of debts. Living beyond people's means. The credit card. The credit crunch happened because of the credit card. The credit card curse. You know, it's actually recommended. If you don't need it, don't keep credit cards. Keep a debit card. Better to avoid credit cards. Islam says, don't, if you can't afford something, don't buy it. If you've got it, alhamdulillah, buy it. If you can't afford it, actually it's even recommended not to even take a loan. It's halal, but the ulama have said that it's recommended not to take a loan if you don't need it. Only if you're in desperate need, like you need a household for example, but you really, really need it, then take a loan. But if there's no need, if it's a, something which is just a, not a basic haja need, it's, uh, it's just a bit extra, then never take a loan. And that's why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa used to always make a dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ghalabati dayn. After every salah, he used to make a dua, oh Allah, pre- preserve, protect me. I don't want to get in debt. A debt-free life is a stress-free life, as they say. A debt-free life is a... Don't have a debt and you'll be relaxed. As they say, the youngsters chilling. You know, no nothing, no worry. You just live each day as it comes. Don't worry about tomorrow. If you can't afford a car, buy it. If you can't afford this sh- th- these shoes, buy it. If you've got cash in your pocket, or you've got some amount in your, in your bank, buy it. If you don't, forget about it. You don't have to buy it. This whole system is based on, they make you, you know, this is a materialistic system. They give you all the adverts. Christmas is coming, shopping, boxing. Even if, some, if you don't need it, people will still go and buy you know, don't get deceived by these sales. There's another whole topic, you know, the theory of sales. We can do another talk on that. This is a deception. Complete deception how these sales happen. So don't get deceived by them. If you really need something, you go and buy it, whether it's February, March, April, May, or July, or December. If you don't need it, don't just run for the sake of buying it. Oh, this will, you know, run, stand in the line tomorrow morning, boxing day, 10 o'clock, it's going to end. This is a deception. They're taking money out from you. If you don't need it, don't buy it. So this is one of the things in Islamic system. Don't live beyond your means. If you, you know, and avoid credit cards. And there's so many other things because of which this whole crisis has come about. But what we need to do is learn about the basic teachings of Islam, about business, trade, about avoiding all these things that we need to avoid, which definitely, first and foremost, includes interest, gambling, chancing, and uh, gharar, and uncertainty. Do your business in a halal way, in a lawful way, in an Islamic way, according to the guidelines of the Quran and Hadith, inshaAllah. May Allah grant us tawfiq.